My name's Nikki Madigan and I'm here with Bob Walker on July 30th, 2015 and Dana Andrew is filming this conversation and we're going to be talking to Bob about his memories driving the old Hydro Tote Road south of Pemberton, which today is known as Highway 99. But uh, I've talked to Bob a little bit about this and it sounds like it was quite the road back in the early days. So when you retired from logging, is that when you moved to Whistler? Yes. No, but before I retired, I used to drive from here. I had a house in Mission. Okay. My family lived in a Mission. So I used to drive every Friday night from here, and where the power line road was in, I went to Mission. It took me about well, between five and seven hours to get to Spanish. Five or seven hours. Wow. Now, what year was this? About 62, I think. So the hydro road was roughed in by that roughed point? In, yeah. Walk us through a typical trip then. So you would leave on a Friday night, what you would leave Friday after night work? And uh, head down that way. And, uh, I had to carry four boards in my truck and pick up. To the river track. Oh, you had on. to put the planks over yeah, the tracks. The tracks. Okay. And what we called, we went up the hill called Parker's Hill on that far side of the Green River. Okay. And that was a steep, very steep hill. So the highway today is well, going in a new place. Yeah, so the right. old road went around the far side by yeah. Parker's. Yeah. Okay. So the new, the new highway now don't go anywhere near the old road. Now. Oh. When you come down to the down Brandywine, come down Brandywine Hill, and went across the Brandywine River, and then across the railroad again. Okay. And then we went down over the canyon, and you had to go down, in, not over the, not right through the second one. You went down and come to Chikai. Oh. It was just the end of the canyon when there used to be a big tunnel painted on a rock there. We could go over down, and that's how we had down down the swellers. And Never. you said you had to drive across the Daisy Lake Dam? Yep. Yeah. Yep. There would have been uh, a lot of rivers and creeks to cross, so yep. what were the bridges like? There were no were... bridges on the small river, like the Fitzhammer River had no bridge, and Rebel Creek had no bridge. Wow. They didn't go through the water. Yeah. What about the Rutherford here? And the Rutherford had a lot of bridge across it. So and just the, a single lane? Yeah, and the Sioux had a lot of bridge across it. Okay. So we went across that. And um, then we, we just saw the power line up and down the hill, we were the towers were. We were going to tower up there, we were up there. And then, and then, and then. So it was a real windy yeah, route, yeah, yeah. and it didn't go in a straight line? I don't know how the devil ever found it in the first place. <laughs> just as I worked up there quite a bit on it, and I built some of the road. You did? Yeah. When you were in Whistler? Yeah. So you wouldn't get to Mission until 2 in the morning, or? Uh, just something like that. Yeah. Wow. So you're navigating this road in the dark? Lots of it. Oh, yeah. And this was year-round or just through the summer? Yeah, I made the last trip about Christmas Eve. And about Christmas yeah. Eve. Wow. Yeah, now, would you have a plow on the front of your truck? No, or? It just blow too snow. When I got down to the city, it looked like a snowball. I would have filled snow. <laughs> and and how many men would you take with you? I take the bunkhouse crew, so there were six of us, I guess. So that's handy if you get into trouble, I guess. And I remember one night we had a flat tire and they just picked my truck up and we'll go to tire on. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. And now what kind of truck would you be driving? It's a GM positive traction. Yeah. When the four wheel drive it both back wheel drove. So it would it would actually pass a Jeep on the road. Hmm. It was a truck. It was a fun that day. And then I went went work for school ward. That was before the road was coming to Pemberton from the door only to Squamish. And that was 1958, I think, wasn't um, it? That the road came north from Squamish? Yeah, no. I went to work and the road... In 65, I went to work at the school board, so the road went that way. The road just went in 65. It was just a hydro road north of Whistler? No, it was a pretty good railroad road. They made a good road. They just ended up with the It went all around to the second of the river, but it was a good gravel road. 
I mean the road though in 65 north from Whistler was still just a hydro yeah. road. Oh yeah. Yeah. So. But once I, then I lived at Whistler. Okay. I stayed there and uh, I drove the bus for seven years to Squamish from there. Seven years he drove bus from Alta Lake to Squamish. You know, is it a bus? I still don't think it's a bus. Do you? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bob has brought out um, a book that was written uh, by Florence Peterson, The History of the Alta Lake Road Between Rainbow and Scotia Creeks. And there's a picture here of the school bus <laughs> that Bob used to drive. And he did this for seven years, driving the school bus from Alta Lake, and that's what Whistler used to be called, down to Squamish. That's how it looked every morning. And that's how it looked every morning, he says. <laughs> and this is a newspaper clipping of Bob. He was the first citizen of the year in Whistler for his efforts driving the school bus. 1966. Actually, I think that date was wrong, I think. I think about 69. 69? Yeah. So you were the first name on that plaque? I was the first on top, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Now, how many kids would need to be bused? In that bus, there were 16 kids. 16? Because I used to pick them up in Garibaldi, too. Oh, okay. And then in Squamish, I picked them up right in General, and that, 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 that way around the North of Irish. I picked up kids there. So I read about 16 kids in Spanish. And what is your uh, memory of some of your worst trips down that road with 16 Actually, kids? I remember everything was pretty nice in that road. Sometimes I, I'd get stuck. One time I turned around, I had to go back. But just but not very many times I had to stop for weather. That was a good bus, it had sanders on it, on the back wheels. What does that mean? That when you push a button on it, that poured sand in front of the wheels. Oh, really? I, I went down to Ontario and got that bus from Bluebird Factory. Did you? And drove back to Ontario. And did you ship it out by rail? No, I drove it all the way. You drove it across Canada? I actually drove eight of them out <laughs> different times. For the school board? Yeah. Wow. Okay. So you uh, got to choose the equipment that you were going to use on the roads. That, that's what I, we built that special. You built it especially. Well, I don't know what ever happened that little bus. It was a dandy. Actually, I pulled a BC hydro truck out of the ditch with that bus. It was something. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> now, what would BC hydro have been driving? Jeeps? No, they were driving a 6x6 truck. Big boom truck. They tow up. Okay. And they stuck. Well, that thing had a positive traction rear end on it. And how many men would be working on that road when you would travel that road? Well, would you see anyone else? No, wouldn't anybody else. Do you, when I went out, well, everybody had to quit that time of the day. Right. I remember one night, some character would have to butt the cat across the road. They quit on purpose, I think. So that you couldn't get through? Well, I just took a by car and drove to get on the road and through. The noise of cab driver. Were there logging shows along that road um, in that time? In the earlier days there was. But the only one that was down there I mean, was below. Below, is that Mons? <laughs> yeah. Did you ever have to rescue anyone when you were making that trip? Not really. We were yeah. pulling guys out of the ditch and stuff. And, um, only one time I turned around and had to come back. And when the road was lazy, I made a loop in the second bus canyon. The bus slid down the hillside. <laughs> I just come home and I had more trouble getting back home than I had to get. I'm sure what, you yeah, should have kept going. Yeah. I know Highway 99 is famed for debris torrent flows and landslides. How much of that did you encounter in your I early years? I brought all the kids home to my place at El Lake one time, a whole bus road back to my house. There's a slide just outside of the mound there. I'd come up to a creek there and cover the road. Oh. I couldn't get through it, so I brought all the kids home. <laughs> The whole thing, you know, then I stopped the wave freight in the morning and 
put them all on. But. So I guess the main road in Alta Lake at that time was what today is known as West Side Road. There was no... That was the only road. That was the only road yeah. around the far side yeah. of the lake. Actually, that road came right through my yard, right, the place I bought in Alta Lake. Oh, yeah. It came right through the yard. And it came out at uh, Function Junction. The trail did. Okay. It's still, parts of it still there, I think. Probably a bike trail today. Yeah. yeah. That was 70 years ago. And how many years did you live on West Side Road? Um, 65 to uh, about 81. 81. Yeah. So you saw a lot of change in Whistler in the time that you lived there. Well, Whistler just been just a sign on a stump one time. A sign on a stump. That's all it was across there. No road. I remember I was hunting one day and I seen a big sign on the road that said the future home of Western Mountain Ski Resort until I stumped. Did you have a laugh? <laughs> Actually, I, I did kind of. <laughs> and one year I opened the road up with a cat, right from Pemberton, right to Callahan Creek. I fell asleep. We got the PG on strike, but not the BCR then. They were on strike, so I had to open up a kind of a trail to get groceries in here. Oh, okay. So I got uh, my machine and plowed the road all the way down. And now how long would that strike have gone on? A few weeks or something? Where? I don't know. It took me eight days to get the road plowed. Oh. 16 hours a day. All night and night, day. And, uh, so the road would really only be open so many months of the year? It would be closed and... Well, that, they were just doing this part here. Okay. And some was a good road, and but it would stop here. At and high then, water, would bridges lift up and move around? No. No. Uh, I went across the little river with a cat. If they couldn't across the wooden bridge, that they made 40 times. Right. <laughs> went to the, went to the, down to, to um, Rutherford through that river. And you spent a lot of your life building roads, right, I in did. this area? Just with all these scars in this country, I made them. So you built the Mosquito Lake Road? No. Yep. And you helped build the road north from uh, Whistler? Yeah, yep. and even Duffy. And the Duffy, too. And the Duffy, right, to, right up to the pass. That, that road is there. That Duffy. must have been a, a knuckle breaker. Uh, actually, the doggone thing doesn't look much different. It's just paved. <laughs> it looks the same. They just paved the log and it was all back. So the road is following that original road cut that yep. you made? It's in the very same place. Wow. So yeah. you picked the right line to build the road. Well, when we built that one, there was a law that you had to build by highway specification. So they told you where you had to go. Okay. It was going to be an original road. And when did the Duffy open? We were trying to pin that down the other day. Was it 91? Or was it earlier than that? I just can't remember. You did that trip to Mission. How many years did you do that? Uh, it must have been about 11 years, I guess. 11 years? Mm -hmm. Every Friday night? Yeah. Wow. You must have been the most regular driver on that road at the time. You used to meet, once in a while you meet somebody. The health nurse in Pemberton used to meet her once in a while. She used to drive a jeep up and down. Who was that? Uh, Leona Coslidge. Leona Coslidge yeah. used to drive that. Yeah. Wow, well, by herself or what? Yeah, well, I'm um, <laughs> freaking crazy. And would she be doing that once a week or? Oh no. Maybe I saw her maybe two or three times all the time I drove it. Okay. Yeah. I remember some people tried to tried to follow me out one night and they got stuck and stayed by my Parker's Hill to get make the hills. And they couldn't they couldn't figure out how the hell I had to do it. But I had a, I had a special shot just to make that. Yeah. Up all them hills just like a tank. And I used to bring up pick up the crew at the Kootenay Loop in Hastings Street and come back up there. They were always sitting there waiting for me to go to the pickup. Would you bring supplies up for people? Because oh, yeah. you were going regularly? Yeah, mostly booze. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know, they don't like us right here. Right. Yeah. I guess 
There was the Pemberton Hotel if you could take the train. That's right. The first time I went to the hotel there, they had uh, long tables in there and uh, beer barrels for chairs. And <laughs> it was pretty rough. Uh, I mean, women couldn't go in there. I heard that. The women couldn't drink. Women could only go in if they had an escort, oh, right? right? But then, there was a section that was men's only. That's right. And no women. The, uh, Duffy Lake for a long time. The kind of street. And it just stopped there. It stopped there. And it had to be in the day sometime, I think. I understood it was a lot of um, logging roads that then eventually were connected to turn into the highway. Well, there was no logging road up there when we built it. All the logging roads come after. Okay. Yeah. I think below the logged up there and people after the road was built. Okay. Plus, the kids to Squamish because there was no school in Whistler. So, what year did the school open in Whistler? Well, the elementary school opened, like the Myrtle Phillips school opened, and that was just for elementary kids. But the high school always had to come to Pemberton. Right. There was no high school there until later years after I quit, I guess. Yeah, I don't think there was a high school in Whistler until uh, the 90s almost. Something like that. Yeah. I retired in 1990. So how do you feel now when you drive Highway 99 to Vancouver? Can you believe that that road is it's hard what to, it is it, today? I imagine what it used to be. I remember the first time I took Alec Phillip to, to Swamish in my car. He couldn't believe he got down that quick. <laughs> but all he wanted to do was go to the liquor store. <laughs> yeah. That was the main reason for transportation yeah, back yeah. in the day, right? Yeah, you needed to me now. You well, needed to go get beer. Yeah, don't you die now. You're my only source of supply, he said. Are <laughs> 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 there any other stories you wanted to tell us today about your adventures on that early road? Um, any wildlife that you encountered? or? Well, just one time when I, I stopped on the road to there was a, a fawn on the road, a young spotted doe, deer, and a mother. So I stopped and thought I'd take a look at the fawn. And then the mother went away in the bush, so the fawn hid somewhere. So I was down there, kicking the brush, trying to scare it out. And I made a noise like, wow, wow, like that. And the mother came out of the bush and did what killed me with her. She went by me, I felt the wind on her feet. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do that again. <laughs> Don't mess with the fun when mom's around. <laughs> no. <laughs> Did you see any bears or? I used to see bears a lot. Cougars. Yeah. One night I went down. Uh, you remember years ago there was a, a hurricane come to BC called Hurricane Frida? No, but tell I, me about that. I went down there on Hurricane Frida. And it, and it, and yeah, it was just Sandy Park and did. There was no bridge across the second half. So we all the trees were down in Sandy Park across the road, the power lines and stuff. Oh. And I went all the way to Vegas and that hurricane almost blew me off the road. Now what year was this? Before I retired, so it was in the uh, late 70s, I guess, about 78. Because didn't that happen in more recent times? There was another big windstorm in Stanley Park that knocked a bunch of trees yeah, down. Yeah, it did, yeah. yeah. It, wasn't, it wasn't the class of the hurricane. Well, this, this was a real, honestly, got a hurricane. Really? When I got home in vision, the neighbor's tree was in my yard. <laughs> it blew it up by the root. And blew it. Tipped it right over. Yeah. And you drove that road. I drove it right. In the hurricane. Flats and all that. I wonder what the hell is there's a big window here. <laughs> <laughs> I never knew it was a hurricane. I didn't, there was nobody else on the road though. I didn't pass much traffic, everybody stayed home I guess. Yeah. But nobody told me there's a hurricane going. <laughs> I just went home. <laughs>